This show is for informational purposes only and is not to be construed as legal advice. Always consult an attorney for legal advice. Views expressed by guests of the radio show are individual opinions and not endorsed by Maitri. Maitri does not endorse any businesses, including but not limited to legal attorneys, financial advisors, and tax consultants that may be advertised before or after the show. Listeners are advised to use their own discretion. Hello everyone, welcome to the Maitri show Between Friends. In this show, we will be talking about different issues related to intimate partner violence, family violence and abuse, gender-based violence, and power dynamics in relationships. The goal of our show is to engage our community members in addressing and challenging those harmful social and cultural conditions, norms that make intimate partner violence, family violence and abuse, and other gender-based violence acceptable. We believe our show Between Friends will mobilize our community in ending victim blaming and preventing violence and abuse in partner and familial relationships. In each episode, we will be providing insights and resources that will not only help victims and survivors, but also educate our community members about these issues these resources and uh, that are available in the community so that they can help someone in need. Tune in every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. on Radio Zindagi to listen to the Maitri show Between Friends. You can also find all episodes of Maitri's Between Friends on our website, Maitri Bay Area Facebook page and on SoundCloud. You can email your suggestions and feedback to us at maitri at maitri.org. Together, we can end domestic violence, intimate partner violence, and gender-based violence. अगर आप या कोई और जिसे आप जानते हैं जो घरेलू और डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस से गुजर रहे हैं कृपया मैत्री से संपर्क करें मैत्री की सेवाएं बिल्कुल मुफ्त और विश्वासनीय हैं हमारी सेवाएं हिंदी पंजाबी मराठी गुजराती और अन्य दक्षिण एशियाई भाषाओं में उपलब्ध हैं यू कैन कॉल अस मंडे टू फ्राइडे 9 टू 3 पीएम ऑन 18886248740 और आफ्टर आवर्स लीव वॉइसमेल इन योर लैंग्वेज यू कैन आल्सो ईमेल अस एट मैत्री एम ए आई टी आर आई एट मैत्री डॉट ऑर्ग Hello everyone, welcome to our show Between Friends. At today's episode, I am your host Nandini Ray and the discussion topic is victim blaming. For all of us who are working with uh, the survivors of domestic violence, uh, sexual assault, we know that victim blaming can have a huge impact on victims and this attitude is prevalent in every culture and in every community. In cases of domestic violence and sexual assault, many times people directly or indirectly blame victims rather than the perpetrators. Uh, Like, oh, victim must have done something to provoke the violence. He or she did something by actions, words, or dress. I can talk about some high profile cases, Chris Brown and Rihanna case or Ray Rice and Jane Rice case. These cases are, you know, all over the media and Many people at that time asked questions that why didn't she leave? She didn't leave because of money, because of status. And uh, another case I can talk about that uh, Brooke Turner case, a Stanford student who raped and assaulted an unconscious female student behind a dumpster. At that time, I, I'm, I'm sure that you also have noticed that many people uh, ask questions that what was she doing there? Uh, was she drunk? Instead of asking that, why did he rape? I can also talk about big South Asian cases like uh, one Silicon Valley CEO, Avishek Gatani, when he abused um, his wife, people, many people ask questions that, oh, she is an Apple executive, she is smart, educated, why didn't she leave? You know, this is so wrong and people should have asked that, why did he abuse? I remember one uh, male college student once told me that, you know, when I was abused by my uh, girlfriend and I uh, shared that feeling with my friends and they told me that, are you kidding? You are six feet tall. You are a man. Are you sure you are not making these things up for getting attention? Something like that. And um, so it's, it's, it's heartbreaking for us as DV advocates to listen to this kind of accusation. Since at Maitri, we believe that abuse is never victim's fault and 
uh, to end victim blaming we must have it is necessary to start a dialogue and that's what we are going to do today starting a dialogue on how to stop victim blaming what is victim blaming to discuss this very important community issue we have three guests today vishal akshi valarnat kashmira patel and alap murali all three of them are a certified domestic violence advocates all of them are representatives from uh, south asian communities and uh, they are representing uh, different um, demographics Kashmira and Alap are Maitri volunteers and Vishali is a Maitri staff. So welcome Vishali, Kashmira and Alap and uh, let's start the conversation. Thank you Nandini. We are very happy to be here today. Thanks Nandini. This is a great platform for starting the dialogue. Happy to be here. Oh great. I'm so excited that I have all of you here today to start this uh, conversation on this very important community issue. You know I was having a conversation with my friend uh, one of my friends and um on this victim blaming topic and she told me she said that we used to do victim blaming in our community we have evolved maybe 5 10 years back we used to do victim blaming but now after me too movement we have changed a lot we don't do uh, victim blaming we we are more educated aware of the situation and i was thinking hmm is it really so i really want to start this question with you do you think that uh, we don't do victim blaming in our community anymore victim blaming is a rather unconscious thing that we do it's not something that is going to go away anytime soon um i think it has definitely reduced it's not as much as it was 10 years back but I I was actually uh, thinking about the same uh, case that you mentioned earlier Nandini that is uh, Abhishek Gattani and when that case was happening I was meeting a friend uh who works at Walmart and I believe his wife was working at Walmart at the time and um I asked her are you going to do the there was a march I believe that w- was happening in her favor and I asked her are you going to go because uh, she's kind of a colleague and she was like No, I don't think so because she should have just left a long time back and she it, it's all uh, she's responsible basically. She did hear a lot from me as how she is not responsible how, how there are so many different factors that affect the decisions this uh, the victims take um, about whether they can leave or not leave or it's ingrained in the society, right? That I, I think when I I listened to her um interview that she did on TV she explained why she stayed for so long in all of that i i see flavors of whatever she said in a lot of people that i know um to certain degrees they're there but victim blaming happens unconsciously is what i think i i might even catch myself doing that at, at often times and someone says like yeah but you know it could be for whatever reasons that she didn't and i i do correct myself I definitely agree with Kashmira that victim blaming often times is not a malicious thing many people from our own communities many of even my own friends and family members when they talk about abuse especially when they talk about gender based abuse they always give their support or show their support in different ways they think that the work I do with my three is admirable they say oh but women already have so much power women are so empowered so anything wrong that goes on against them they must in some way be also contributing to the problem that is what that is the mindset that it comes from the presumption that power is already the society we live in is already equitable but we also see so many ways in which power distribution is not equal in our societies and so many times victims and survivors have many 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 roadblocks in just exiting a situation that is unsafe for them or that is abusive towards them so what we often times don't do maybe is use our empathy to really imagine ourselves in that person's life and if we do that maybe we will understand that hey it's not so easy to anticipate every situation in which you can be abused or to exit that situation 
and and keep yourself safe. So I think sometimes it's not malicious, but just conditioning to think in a certain way, or maybe not putting ourselves in somebody else's shoe and experiencing their agony or or their uh, difficulty in making an empowering choice. I totally agree with everything Kashmir and Vishali have said. Uh, victim blaming isn't something that's that's gone away, and like Kashmir said, it's not something that's going away anytime soon. So to put myself into perspective, I'm 23 years old, um, which means I went to high school prom about five years ago, mm-hmm. uh, five or six years ago. And prom is, is really a time when, you know, our boys are really taught what it means to be a man and what girls are taught what it means to be a woman, whatever that means, right? <laughs> um, so I, I clearly remember that the school sent out, my high school sent out a memo the night before prom saying, um, that only, that women have to dress a particular way. Um, they, they released like a very strict, um, dress code that only applied to the women and there was absolutely nothing that went out for the guys. And, you know, I went to junior prom as well. This was senior prom that I'm talking about, but junior prom, the guys came in wearing all kinds of strange outfits as well. So it's not just the, the girls who, <laughs> who, who like to dress up and express themselves during prom. Um, so I think, uh, victim blaming is, uh, I, I like the idea, Kashmir, you brought up, it's an unconscious thing. Um, I think we're taught to, so I, I do believe that unconscious things still come from things that we've learned or experienced. So victim blaming is something that we, that we learn to accept early, even in high school. So it's something that we need to change in uh, younger generations as we, as we go forward. That actually brings a very uh, interesting thought in my head where you say, like, wh- where is this mindset coming from? And also, Alap said that it is a learned experience that we all just think in one way. And I'm, I'm, I, I was just thinking while listening to you both. And I feel like there are two things at play here. One is mm-hmm. that we as human beings tend to give people benefit of doubt. Like anytime someone is accused, we kind of try to say, Oh, maybe they didn't mean to do it. Maybe you had some part in it because any action, we tend to look at it as two people being involved and we, we kind of give the benefit of doubt. But in this case, um, since there is violence and abuse involved, the, there, I don't see a scope for the benefit of doubt as, the, and the question that we need to ask is not what the victim was doing that triggered this, what, what, what they did that kind of, uh, made the abuser do what they did, but the question that we need to start asking, that we need to teach our children to ask, that we need to, bring keep foremost in our minds is why did that person behave like this not what triggered it right Mm. because yes i agree that there are triggering behaviors from another person but that nothing kind of uh, validates abuse and violence absolutely so that that is the core mindset change that we need to uh, bring about Mm -hmm. absolutely um so let Let me ask you another question that I have in my mind today that, you know, sometimes we see, uh, sometimes or many times actually, we see that uh, um, uh, survivors of domestic violence or sexual assault, they generally don't report abuse. Um, They are scared of uh, talking about their abuse to anyone else. And domestic violence, sexual assault, these these kind of crimes are always, always underreported. So do you think that people, uh, when they get abused, they don't report that because they are scared of victim blaming? They think that people will misunderstand them? So the first thing that comes to my mind is there are many, many, many reasons why a person would not be okay with talking about their experience of abuse. I've spoken to many, many of um, many survivors and victims of abuse, and most of them feel some level of guilt and shame or a sense of failure sometimes uh, that this is going on in their lives. Having said that, I also want to put a disclaimer in here that Every person has different motivations, has different reasons for reaching out for help or not reaching out for help, for discussing what's going on. So I don't want to put every every person that uh, is undergoing abuse in one box. But having said that, 
maybe we can all rewind and think about one time when somebody has told us something that's going on and in this sense let's say it's an intimate partner relationship so it's a husband or a boyfriend and somebody came and said oh you know uh, this happened this altercation happened and they share what went on the instinct for so many of us to give them platitudes to tell them hey um did you try this or did you try that maybe if you behave differently um you know uh, this would not have happened the our our instinct to give advice is so strong and therein lies the first seed of self doubt we are telling a person who sharing their really terrible experience with their partner we are telling them that if they did something differently the partner's behavior would change none of us say you know what whatever happened it was not okay for somebody to shout at you it was not okay for somebody to snatch your cell phone away it was not okay for that person to shut you out in the patio and make you stay there for 2 hours so when we see incidences of of however minor transgressions as we look at them as if we do not support the person if our first thing out of our mouth is if, if you had done this the outcome would have been different then i think therein lies the seed for self doubt of wondering whether i caused this behavior so i think this is something we commonly do and that kind of makes a person really not reach out for help or not share what's going on because it kind of inhibits inhibits so what them. i'm hearing that you think that many people they don't reach out for help because they have seen in their surroundings that victim blaming is happening and they think that it will happen with me too so that's why i don't have to so i don't know if many of the folks that do undergo this call it victim blaming because victim blaming is obviously if i if you ask anybody in the community most people in our communities will say do you do victim blaming no i don't do victim blaming but have they told somebody who is undergoing a difficult experience why don't you adjust have you tried this you are the woman of the family so if you did a b or c or you are a man if you did a b or c this would not happen we don't frame in our own heads that behavior as victim blaming we call it giving advice we call it supporting somebody we frame it differently and many of our um, many of the clients that i've spoken to also don't call it victim blaming they said you know uh, this when when 10 years back i shared this with with a common friend she said if i only had dinner ready every day by 7 pm uh, maybe this won't happen maybe he won't be angry and that person that common friend was not being mean or, or not being malicious they were just giving the best advice that they could come up with in that moment so the, it it doesn't the first time it happens doesn't come across as victim blaming because we all know victim blaming is a bad thing but giving advice is not a bad thing so it sometimes starts yeah, off as small yeah i things. get it i get it about you i was trying to say like i I know that some people maybe they don't know that it is victim blaming it is called victim blaming but the idea the the you know the culture of not believing when mm-hmm. someone is going through abuse uh maybe uh that's the fear they have that who will believe me so I would like to know do you think that many survivor victims they don't reach out to for help because they fear of victim blaming so i would actually like to continue with what uh, we were saying that people first reach out to whoever they are in their their common friends people that they trust um, that they can open up to and what they get mostly what they get back in return is advice like do this and do that and things might get better and the core reason for this i feel is because of the importance that is being given to keeping a, an intimate relationship together no matter what you have to stay in this you have to make this work uh, even if uh, it means uh, taking abuse even if it means living in fear but we need to keep this together right that is uh, 
so ingrained again in the culture like nandini you mentioned right that it's not that they fear that if they come out uh, and report things that they that they might be blamed for it but that already happens before they even think of reporting when they talk to someone of course any time the first time something happens they don't nobody thinks of going to the cops right nobody thinks of reporting it to the legal authorities they'll talk to someone they're close to and what they get back in return is this kind of advice that what they can do to make things better yeah adjust, and that slowly adjust. and that slowly makes them believe that yes this is my fault hmm. so it's it's that mental brainwash i guess uh, that happens that eventually when things get really bad um, that's wh- when they they fearing for their life or something like that when it just becomes unbearable that's when they decide to not listen to any advice given given out by their well wishers and they need to take a step right that's so the, the the main thing that is here is that we we give so much importance to relationships and not to an individual hmm. yeah the individual is suffering that's fine but at least the relationship is intact i think so i as a man i'm um, at maitri um i've had the unique opportunity i think to work with some male clients Mm-hmm. So I can talk a little bit about what I've observed with some of those clients and victim blaming. In in their communities, I think before we can even use the word victim blaming in their situations, they're not considered victims. It's more like, oh, you just did something stupid, so your wife is just giving you crap for it. Excuse my language, but it's not. Uh, it's 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 considered almost like, oh, you're too sensitive if you're calling yourself a victim in the situation. And obviously, men aren't. supposed to be considered sensitive right um that's that's what we've been hearing so we've all heard growing up but i think the reality is is pretty far from that even men can have traumatic experiences regardless of whether they have female partners male partners um any other gender partners it's tough as a male to come out and speak because it's just like who's going to believe you right it's uh, we, we even in in pop culture today uh in movies and stuff you hear so many situations you you watch so many situations of men just just uh you know being yelled at or you know being being shoved around by their wives or by their girlfriends or partners or girl or female friends or whoever it is and we even say things like oh it's um it's it's wrong for for a man to hit a woman but it's still considered okay in some situations for a woman to go and slap a man in the face right like i i've observed many situations in college and in high school where you know like a, a guy mis- misbehaves or or granted he misbehaved um or he just made a joke or said something stupid right and he he got a slap in the face or some physical physical pain as a result so in those cases even if the man speaks up it's hard for for any of of his community to actually believe he's actually a victim because victim is such a strong word to men and i think that needs to change Yeah we have seen uh, many layers and many forms of victim blaming and i was i just wanted to add that sometimes it's even difficult to recognize a, a certain behavior as a, as abuse so a, and also certain behavior as victim blaming like like vishali mentioned right that we're just giving advice but it's victim blaming in disguise so it's really hard to recognize what we're doing whether it's abuse or, or victim blaming i think that's especially true in the case of male victims where at least the cases i've seen you guys can correct me if i'm wrong but at least the cases i've seen don't aren't male victims who are victims of physical abuse it's often emotional or financial or some other types of abuse and that's just in the male world it's just having a, a stuck up nosy wife <laughs> right which is wrong so just wanted to make that point so i think it's good to kind of um summarize all of this and what i'm hearing is direct uh, victim blaming is is easy to recognize somebody saying oh she caused it mm. but i think there are so many hidden ways of victim blaming like norms that we set for the genders the gender box we put ourselves into so if you are a woman you need to do a b c if you are a man you need to behave in this way a b c and if you don't then you're asking for abuse so i think that uh so called logic needs to be broken at every stage so whenever somebody puts somebody else or we ourselves put tend to put somebody else in a certain gender box we probably need to question ourselves why 
why are we saying that or why are we thinking that and also maybe understand that the nature of abuse itself starts small and then grows into a pattern of repetitive coercive behavior so even for us it seems like oh this is such a small thing but a person who's sharing with us really comes with a lot of emotion and really feels hurt maybe we can just listen to them we don't have to give them any advice just listen to them and be that support person and and validate their feelings so that they feel at least that there is somebody to share to the next time it happens and then if they continue to share with us many 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 times then you know we might be the mirror that can tell them hey you've shared this with me uh 20 times in the past 6 months is there a pattern of behavior so the person who who themselves does not recognize that these small things are adding up into a pattern may it may be helpful for us as a family to hold up that mirror or a friend to hold up that mirror and say hey you have been telling me this so many times is there something more that's going on and help them recognize it for what it is because abuse the first time is not a black eye very often the first time it is very innocuous innocent behavior that we think is oh it's okay but it builds up it is the 50 texts that sometimes passes off for love in our societies but actually is a recurring pattern of control so i think it's being aware that it comes in many many forms and many times are hidden are hidden even as safety rules that don't go outside after 10 pm if you are a woman if you do go out then you are asking for it so it's hidden sometimes So when I'm hearing you Vishali I am noticing the knowledge the training you had as a domestic violence advocate since all three of you are certified domestic violence advocates so your understanding your mindset um, has to be different from many other people who are not thinking that consciously that they are doing victim blaming or they are not understanding someone's pain I just wanted to add one thing Nandini I really do think that as advocates as people who work often times with survivors and victims we do have a certain perspective to share but I also want to add that um in fact the more number of years that one is in the same field I think just the thought that oh now i know everything or is is very easy to give into that feeling that oh we are experts but i really don't think so because every person who comes to us with a story is a different person their story is different their background is different so i think the minute even any of us advocates get into oh i know all about this or now i'm an expert at not victim blaming i think we are setting a, a trap for ourselves i really mm. think whether we are an advocate or not an advocate whether we are trained or not whether this is the 100th time we are listening to a story of assault or abuse or this is the first ever time we are hearing i think the basis is the same i think we should listen just listen to somebody who has something to share give them unconditional support and love and encourage them to tell us even if we we are not expected to fix anything we are just there for them so they can share what is in their mind and also most important be in an introspective frame of mind meaning think about our own behaviors think about our own thoughts and how even after maybe 10 years of experience as an advocate or 20 years maybe we might be doing something or saying something inadvertently that kind of fixes the blame on a person who is undergoing domestic violence i read this thing about a nurse practitioner who was a dv advocate herself and then she was also a dv victim after she had done years of advocacy uh, and that really brought home to me how any amount of knowledge any amount of understanding uh, about abuse and all of that still does not insulate you from from being a victim because 
being a victim may not be in your hands and that's what we are saying here that being a victim sometimes is in the abuser's hands of of that person doing something to the victim so the same thing about victim blaming i think we have to be in an introspective frame of mind always and and catch ourselves when you know we may be victim blaming ourselves you are so right we yes uh, we have to remember that we are also human being we can make mistake but we have to be open minded toward constant learning and we keep doing this kind of discussion to educate ourselves to educate each other to educate our community members and to engage them in this conversation for listeners who have just tuned in we are discussing the issue of victim blaming with three trained domestic violence advocates in the hope of engaging our community in ending this attitude Please listen to this show and find out if you are doing any victim blaming even indirectly. We will be back after a short break. Be with us. अगर आप या कोई और जिसे आप जानते हैं जो घरेलू और डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस से गुजर रहे हैं कृपया मैत्री से संपर्क करें मैत्री की सेवाएं बिल्कुल मुफ्त और विश्वसनीय हैं। हमारी सेवाएं हिंदी पंजाबी मराठी गुजराती और अन्य दक्षिण एशियाई भाषाओं में उपलब्ध हैं। यू कैन कॉल अस मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन टू थ्री पी एम ऑन वन एट 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 सिक्स टू फोर एट सेवन फोर फॉर आफ्टर आवर्स लीव वॉइस मेल इन योर लैंग्वेज यू कैन ऑल्सो ई मेल अस एट मैत्री एम ए आई टी आर आई एट मैत्री डॉट ऑर्ग Okay friends we are back into the conversation you are listening to the matri show between friends and we are discussing victim blaming with three trained dv advocates let's move on to our next question what should be our um, role as a community member in ending victim blaming what can we do to end it i think i mentioned this a little bit already that we need to change our mindset as to it's not the relationship that's more important than the individual um the other thing is what we mentioned that we need to listen we need to try and and un- make out if there's a pattern and then show them the mirror that i'm seeing this thing is going on what do you think um that kind of honesty we don't show to our friends and family when um it's a it's a f- an intimate relationship that's uh concerned because we feel like oh it's not my place to say anything but it is it definitely is and the other thing i often notice is uh, this is probably very weird in our culture that where victims and survivors are so scared to speak or have so much self doubt uh, am i doing something wrong here is that why this is happening to me and they don't speak up people who do perpetuate abuse or violence brag about it sometimes so i feel like um, when somebody comes and says you know she said this to me i was so mad and i just gave her one tight slap that's somebody actually bragging about physical abuse that they are doing and in the same way statements like you know i have my spouse under control he has to listen to whatever i say and if not i just make the bigger scene and make sure that he follows uh, what i'm saying something like that sounds like uh, they are bragging about some uh, behavior that is so controlling towards another person so i feel somewhere that we also have to address this culture of bragging when somebody feels safe enough in their own group and usually those groups are gendered meaning uh, many wives may brag about oh i have my husband under control to their other girlfriends or uh, a guy could just engage in so called locker room talk and brag to his male friends that oh i gave her a slap or you know i have my wife under control or my wife can't spend a dime without asking me those are things that often go unchallenged and so maybe all of us who sometime in our past have blamed a victim or asked a victim why she is doing this or not doing this can actually do the other thing now and ask this bragger why they want to do this why they want to control another person's life or why they think it's okay for them to um, to hit or minimize a physical abuse as just a slap so i think maybe we can challenge ourselves to speak up when um, somebody who's controlling and abusive actually brags about it i think it's just as simple as when somebody comes up to you and opens up to you and tells you that they're a victim to something just believe them right 
um, because nobody, regardless of who you are, what gender you are, where you're from, how old you are, um, nobody's going to joke about being a victim. It's the, the word victim is a pretty strong word in, in our society. Um, so, you know, everybody wants to feel confident and empowered. And if somebody's coming up to you, especially someone that who, who thinks that they can trust you is coming up and telling you that they're a victim to, to domestic violence or some other kind of abuse, um, just believing them and being there for them and not questioning why they feel that way is, uh, is a huge step. And I think that's often the first step in stopping this problem. Going back to your question, Nandini, um, if you believe them, you let them know that there's somebody there who, who can listen and then you can help them find the right resources to move forward. Yeah. And, and to add to that, if at all there's a doubt in your head that there's lying or not giving you the true, um, uh, or looking at it from a different perspective, um, instead of saying, what did you do that um, triggered this? You could ask for facts, like, tell me from the beginning what happened that day. Instead of pointing, making it personal about them or the other person, you can always say what happened, and then what happened, and then what happened. And that makes it so factual and not emotional or personal that um, the story completely might change in their heads too if they feel like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a better way of understanding everything. And one more thing I wanted to add, uh, right now is, uh, adding on to what V Vishali was saying about, um, not bragging. The other aspect of this is also not making jokes about it. Um, there's so many times that, um, we see so many stupid jokes in quotes being forwarded and people laughing about it and, I call them up and call them out that this is not funny. Oh, but it is funny. I, it's, it's, I don't believe this. I don't behave like this. This is not, uh, I know this is not a right way to treat anybody, but it's just a joke. You should know that. So that is not okay. It's not, a, if it's not funny, it's not a joke. And in a WhatsApp group of uh, 20 people or 30 people or 100 people, um, there is a very good chance that there is somebody who is probably undergoing some form of abuse. And uh, when they see this um, insensitive uh, so-called jokes being passed around, um, we are creating a culture of that person never wanting to speak up because um, now they will be the subject of this joke, right? Because they are speaking up. Um, and also adding on to Kashmira, um, uh, I also think validating people's feelings because abuse, uh, going through abuse is very, very complex. So at different points, a person could feel shame, could feel guilt, could be blaming themselves. They could say, well, I was not a good mom. That's why this happened to me. Or um, if I behave differently. So they could even be engaging in blaming themselves. Um, so all of these complex emotions, fear, um, to us from outside, it might seem like, oh, why are you so scared? Or don't be afraid. Or so sometimes the language we use seems to say that they should not be feeling what they are feeling. We are trying to be understanding, of course. We are trying to help them. But the things we say pretty much is don't feel what you're feeling. So sometimes it's also important to say, let that person feel what they are feeling. It's okay. But still let them tell their story. Like Kashmira said, um, get get the facts if possible, uh, get them to talk more and just be there for them. Believe them, like Alap said, support them. Um, sometimes it's not even uh, anything we say, maybe just just pat them on, on their hand or, or give them a hug if that's the kind of relationship you share with them and you can give them a hug. Sometimes it's even non-verbal listening cues that makes a person feel like they're being heard. Yeah, and sometimes um, it even helps to ask, okay, so what do you want to do about this situation? Uh, sometimes they kind of know they w know what they want to do, but nobody gives them that uh, space to speak it out loud. Um, so asking, like, yes, I understand this is a difficult situation. What do you think you should be doing? What do you think you can do? And how can I help you with it? A wonderful discussion and for community members if you are not even you know um, uh, seeing someone who is going through abuse in general uh, victim blaming is bad I mean whenever you are uh, reading a story on newspaper you are listening something on radio or t watching something on TV or news maybe and automatically you are doing victim blaming then tell yourself are you doing the right thing 
for listeners you can do lot of things to end victim blaming uh, challenge victim blaming statements when you hear them do not agree with abusers excuses for why they abuse let survivors know that it is not their fault hold abusers accountable for their actions do not let them make excuses like blaming the victim um you know alcohol or drugs for their behavior um support survivors and provide them right resources avoid victim blaming in the media uh, reframe your question don't ask why did the victim stay but ask why did the perpetrator abuse uh so this um this is uh, very simple and we all can do so friends uh, we have talked um, a lot about individual mindset that uh, leads to victim blaming but uh, what are the influences we see all around us um, that promote a culture of victim blaming what do you think or even like uh, you know helps uh, changing that culture so i think right now um the big influence on people is social media um any kind of media for that matter but social media is definitely big um and that can be very very influential uh if in a good way or a bad way so for for example i think we already put um uh, spoke about the forwards and uh random misogynistic uh forwards that are coming on whatsapp and on facebook and just because uh you're behind the screen um people feel that they can say and do whatever they want right now i feel like it's being used uh, being or rather the, that that power of social media is not being harnessed to its full potential that that's one thing that can be uh, put to a much better use and i know um companies like facebook they do try to monitor a few things where um not not um victim blaming and abuse as such but they do look out for suicidal things and the notes and kind of like that so i i'm sure if one company can do it there's others who could do it or even individuals could do something like that and um uh, movies is another big influence it has always been like movies is a huge 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 influence on uh indian communities um whatever someone can does everybody wants to do so he could make make movies that uh, promote better relationships um that that i'm i'm just picking on him as one person but basically the whole idea is uh just make movies that promote better and relationships and that that's that's going to go a long way i think a lot of people today don't have the right role models in their lives um yes. and that really you know helps propagate this 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 misbehavior um and it's not just boys it's also girls not having the right role models right for example uh, i work in tech so it's it's very common to, to unfortunately not to see a lot of women in in like managerial type positions and I was doing some reading and i realized that a big reason of it is because there aren't a lot of other female managers for women to look up to therefore they don't have the confidence to to shoot for a role like a manager right and i'm sure the same is true in in other types of industries as well um but uh regardless of of where you're working or who you are having a, sh- a a good role model that can instill a sense of confidence in you um and can also humble you i think helps people understand that they shouldn't victim blame others and it also helps people understand that um when they're in a situation where they have the opportunity to victim blame someone um they can think back and realize that it was just only a few few months ago that somebody stood up for me and listened to me um as my role model so they can think back to that experience and realize that it's wrong to victim blame and i would also um put in one more thing i think kids when uh, many of us as parents or as support people for our nieces or nephews or friends kids have a chance to influence young minds which are so malleable when they are younger and i have noticed that kids have a huge untapped potential for being empathetic uh when uh, kids feel what they feel we can all help a kid um 
um, get in touch with their own emotions a little bit better. And by connecting to their own emotions, they can definitely then empathize when another person is feeling bad or feeling sad or feeling hurt or feeling uh, scared. They, they are able to then connect to another person's feelings. And then I believe that that will lead to those kids growing up as empathetic people and it becomes like second nature for them to just listen to somebody support somebody without attempting to give any advice uh, just supporting somebody hearing what they feel and and putting ourselves in 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 their shoes so when we victim blame as adults sometimes it's just the lack of empathy so i feel when we are raising kids if we are able to raise them more as more empathetic uh, adults, then I feel that will make uh, a sea change in our culture. Yeah, and I'd like to add the Allah brought up a really, really good point of role models. Um, these role models need not be parents or teachers or um, people that regularly interact with you because a lot of times people are just looking at uh, somebody they put on a pedestal and they just emulate it without that person even knowing that uh, someone's looking up to them so it's very important for all of us um, to to re to recognize that and make sure that the kids are especially are learning not to victim blame and even um Within the families, like if if a, the the relationship between parents where one is blaming another or or an uncle and or aunt is coming and saying, "Oh, you shouldn't have done that," um, that is something kids pick up uh, and internalize. So 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 something like that, we need to be really mindful of. Like the kids are watching, uh, and not even that. I mean, just make it part of your own personality to not to be really aware of what you're doing and because because people are watching and they're learning from you especially if they look up to you so yeah that that's that's a really good point you brought up a lot thank you for that and i would just add one last thing uh, to what kashmira said um as a community, we could definitely get better about asking for help. Um, I've spoken to many people who have undergone abuse, who've undergone some kind of assault. And I think the bravest thing that they uh, can do really is reach out for help. So I think as a community, we could all get better about uh, just picking up the phone and calling an agency like Maitri and just sharing that, hey, I heard this. Uh, my friend shared this with me. How can I be of help? Um, instead of just making presumptions and blaming the person or just, um, or, or just you know, not knowing what to do and feeling helpless, maybe we can all reach out for help to an agency that will give them that uh, guidance uh, so that uh, they can be a better support person or they can get help in their own situation. So um, agency Agencies like Maitri provide free help. They're confidential. They also you can also be anonymous. You don't have to give a name. You can call from a block number, and you can um, get some um, tips on what you can do in your situation. So I think we should change the culture uh, of being scared to reach out for help. Uh, we should be more open to reaching out. Thank you. Thank you all. We are really having a wonderful discussion and I really don't want to end this discussion here. But, you know, unfortunately, we are running out of time and uh, hopefully we will do this kind of segment again in the future. Um, so listeners, here are some tips for you. If anyone is um, going through any pain and sharing that pain with you, uh, please do listen uh, and be be their support and please do not ask accusatory questions such as um, what did you do to provoke the, the abuse or are you sure you are not making things up or why didn't you leave or even you know uh, but it's your love marriage isn't it and how come it happened the abuse is happening now some these kind of uh, questions uh, can um can stop someone from from reaching out for help or uh, sharing their pain um, so thank you listening for our show between friends conversation with my three keep listening and be with us in making a safe and respectful community for all see you next week bye the my three helpline number is one eight 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 my three or one eight 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 862-4874.
If you joined us later or missed any part of our show, then you can find our episodes on the Maitri Bay Area website, Facebook page, and on our SoundCloud. Visit the Maitri website at www.maitri.org. Email us at maitri at maitri.org. अगर आप या कोई और जिसे आप जानते हैं जो घरेलू और डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस से गुजर रहे हैं कृपया मैत्री से संपर्क करें मैत्री की सेवाएं बिल्कुल मुफ्त और विश्वसनीय हैं। हमारी सेवाएं हिंदी पंजाबी मराठी गुजराती और अन्य दक्षिण एशियाई भाषाओं में उपलब्ध हैं। यू कैन कॉल अस मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन टू थ्री पी एम ऑन वन एट 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 सिक्स टू फोर एट सेवन फोर फॉर आफ्टर आवर्स लीव वॉइस मेल इन योर लैंग्वेज यू कैन ऑल्सो ई मेल अस एट मैत्री एम ए आई